Hello everyone, this is Jim Nix, and this was a Facebook Live video that apparently didn't work on Facebook Live, so I apologize for the technical difficulties. I appreciate those of you that were tuning in and trying to watch, and hopefully that won't happen again uh, next time, but um, for whatever reason, Facebook kept kicking me off after about 10 or 15 seconds, and so instead I am recording the video and I'll share it uh, there in the group, so that's probably where you are seeing it. Okay, so we are talking about Illuminar 2018 here on this Illuminar Live, and it's it's a wonderful product. I've been having a lot of fun playing with it over the last couple of weeks, and what I'm going to do is go through a couple of photos here, show you some tips and tricks on how I'm using it, and maybe give you some ideas on how you can use it as well. Now, this is a photo that I shot at sunset, as you can see, but if you look at the information, you can see I shot it at f2.8, and so a really wide open aperture, and the reason I did that is because uh, I was shooting in this handheld, and so the um, the way uh, I usually like to shoot stuff like this is with a much tighter aperture, like an f16 to f22, and the reason I like those is because those tighter apertures will give you kind of that starburst effect where you can see the rays of the sun kind of making a star. Now, I don't have that here because I couldn't shoot at that aperture. Um, however, we have a sun rays filter, and so that's what, one of the things I want to talk about. First, I'm going to go and just get a couple of filters here in Luminar and add them. And let me get these guys going. So hang on one second. All right, there we go. So I'm going to take a couple of these uh, filters and just make some adjustments. All I'm trying to do is bring back some of the color tones that I uh, enjoyed seeing there that evening because it was a really beautiful sunset. And some of that color was lost in that single exposure. So I'm going to bring that all back. And I think we're pretty good now. So that's more like what I remember the sunset being. Let me show you the before and the after. Now, here's the sun rays thing, right, I wanted to talk about. So I'm going to add sun rays. And obviously, you can move the center around. You just click on Place Center. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a sun ray filter on a photo that already has the sun in it. And what I've been doing a lot of, and I suspect a lot of other people uh, were thinking is, hey, I can add a sun when it was a cloudy day and make it more dramatic or make it more interesting. So I can stick that on a landscape or a, uh, you know, a cityscape or whatever and add a sun when there wasn't one. But don't, don't forget, you can also stick the sun rays filter on top of the sun just to make it, a, you know, give it a bit more punch, if you will. And so in, in many ways, I'm using it to correct the uh, fact that I shot this at f2.8 instead of like at f22. And so it works really well in that way. So uh, I'm going to take the, I'm just going to make a few adjustments here, and I'm just going to slide this around till I kind of get it looking the way I like it to look. I think something like that looks pretty cool. Uh, length, I might shorten that a little bit, maybe warm it up a tad, and I am going to drop the radius because I want it to be a little bit smaller. Uh, increase penetration a tiny amount and randomize. It's just kind of fun to see what you come up with. I like that. We got some neat rays here coming across, and of course you got some cranking out into the uh, sky. Now you can also increase amount if you want, and really to sort of get intense if you want. I'm not going to go like that. I'm going to do something like this, and so that's really the the effect that I'm talking about is taking advantage of the fact that though you already have a sun in your photo, don't hesitate to use sun rays to accentuate it and make it look a little bit better. In this photo, I'd also use the tone filter. What I would like to do is add a little bit of contrast. So I'm going to go ahead and bump that up. And I'm going to use the highlights, and I'm going to take those down. So I'm going to take those down a pretty good amount, just because the to me, the sky is way too bright. Maybe bump up smart tone a little bit, because it's getting a little dark in the foreground. And there you go. You can see with tone, I've gone from that to that. And that's the thing to think about is when you're dragging the contrast to the right, you're going to create some color contrast and your colors are going to look a bit more punchy. So sometimes after I've increased the contrast quite a bit, I come back over here and I maybe take the vi uh, vibrance or the saturation down because I don't want it to be, you know, incredibly, you know, over colorful, right? But that's something to think about. Tone filter is very powerful. It has all these wonderful uh, uh, sliders in it. And that's what I would do to this photo. The, the key thing was really consider using sun rays on a photo that doesn't have um, sun rays in it, but does have a sun like this one. Now there's another filter I want to share here, and that's called LUT mapping. LUT stands for lookup tables. 
And basically, these are files that are typically applied to films in order to color grade them. So you might want to create a warm or a cool feeling or something like that. But they're basically, I like to think of them as color look presets. And um, you'll be able to get some LUTs uh, for free off the web. And I believe there'll be some coming with Illuminar 2018 as well. But this filter allows you to load them. So you just say load LUT file. And you come over here and I've got some they're cube files and so I'm just going to grab that and just say open and boom there you go that's a one look change now you may not like it and that's okay I'm just experimenting here but you can see I went from what I felt like the scene looked like now I'm creating a completely different color look on this photo I may also try this vibrant see what that looks like and that's pretty intense it's still fairly similar to what it looked like before but a bit more intense there's the before there's the after. We can do one more. Um, I'll do this uh, teal and orange. And there you go. Again, very different. Uh, but it's a great way to just stick different sort of color looks onto your photos. And it can make for a lot of fun and unique interpretations to a scene. There's the before and there's the after with that uh, orange and teal uh, cube file, which was a LUT file. So that's a, a little bit about LUT mapping and a little bit about sun rays as well. I'm going to go get another photo. And this is a portrait, as you can see. This uh, was not shot by me. If you followed my work at all, uh, you'll know I, I generally do not shoot uh, portraits. Uh, this was taken by a wonderful photographer named Tim Engel. And I love this shot. It's a nice uh, sort of contrast, if you will, between a female dancer in a dress that's, I don't want to say dainty, but you know, classy and nice, and kind of a dirty street. Uh, you know, with a deli and that sort of thing. And so there's some cool long shadows here, which I, I think look nice. It looks like there was probably a, a light set up beaming on her. And we're going to accentuate some of that in this photo. So I'm going to go get a couple of the filters that I'm going to use. I'm going to start with the matte look, and then I'm going to use tone. And so let me start with those. And yeah, I can just leave the filter menu open because uh, since this is in portrait mode, in other words, it's vertical, I'm not worried about it bleeding over and, and being behind my filter catalog. Okay, so the matte look. This is a really fun filter. There's a lot of cool things you can do with it to create sort of faded vintage type looks. I like to think of it as kind of like the Instagram look, but let me see here. I'm going to drag that to about 56. I'm going to drag fade to somewhere around 61. I think I'll leave contrast there and I'm going to take vividness down a bit. So I don't know, something like that. And so, as you can see, I've made a big impact on the photo already. There's the before and there's the after. Just using the tools in the matte look filter to create sort of a vintage look. Now there's also this toning component. I'm going to demonstrate this as well. You can choose different hues and then the range and the amount basically or the saturation intensity. But you can see as I move through here, there's a lot of different looks. I think this looks pretty cool right here. And, you know, you could increase the range and the saturation a little bit if you would like. But I think that look looks pretty cool. So let me show you the entire effect so far. There's the before. There's the after. Now, for my edit, I'm actually not going to use toning, so I'm going to reset those. But I just wanted to demonstrate that so you're aware of it. I am, however, going to use tone. So I'm going to go pretty high on the contrast. I'm going to do like, you know, 77. I Excuse me, I think that looks good. I'm going to take the highlights all the way to negative 100. And so if you look at what I've done now, I've basically sort of removed a little bit of that vintage look, but it's still kind of faded, which I like. But I've created a lot of contrast that really isolates the model. Um, this was shot at f1.4, so you know, really wide open, which gives you a nice a sort of blurred background. But I, I like how the model now is a bit more isolated from the... Um, from the background and the rest of the image. So let me show you before, fairly evenly lit, and now we're creating nice contrast and nice look here. So I think that was cool. Now I'm gonna go use the sun rays filter again. And I think when you think of sun rays, uh, at least immediately I thought of, oh cool, you know, landscapes or cityscapes, I now can stick a sun in there and brighten up or completely sort of artistically change the photo. But you may not think of using them with portraits, but you can and it creates some neat and interesting effects. So the cool thing about uh, this is you can drag it around and you can hide it behind objects, right? It's kind of hiding, you can kind of hide it behind the building a little bit, right? You can see how some of these rays over here are disappearing, but you can also hide it out of frame. 
And so I'm gonna stick it right up there and say place sun center. So now I've just added basically some rays coming in and they look like they're shining down on the model. So I'm gonna go make that look that way even more. So I'm gonna increase the sun rays. I'm gonna go to like mid 80s or so here, something like that. And look, I'm gonna move that up as well. I'm gonna go to you know 75, 78, something like that. Uh, number, I think that's fine. I think length, uh, maybe a tiny bit, you know, longer. Uh, and warmth, I'm going to go much warmer. So what I'm creating here is a sort of, it looks as though the sun, as you can see, is shining down on this model. So I think that looks really neat. Let me show you the before and the after. It really isolated her and almost put her, um, you know, in a vignette in some ways. So um, I'll keep uh, operating on this a little bit. There's a couple of more minor changes, uh, or maybe just one. I think I'm going to go randomize a little bit. I just like to experiment with this to see what kind of looks I get in the filters uh, or the rays, and I like that look. So let me show you the before and the after. I think that's looking really neat. And so that's something to think about, really two things to think about in terms of the sun rays filter here, and that is number one, you can hide it behind buildings or stick it out of frame and just let the sun rays fall on the photo without the actual uh, sun itself being uh, in the photo. Uh, and number two, you can use it on things like portraits to sort of create some light. The only other thing I think I would do here would be to add a vignette. And what I would do is just, I wanna create kind of a heavy vignette. So I'm gonna do something like that and something like maybe that. Um, I think that really further isolates her. However, I don't really like the way the vignette looks in this corner. So I'm gonna erase, and I'm just gonna erase the vignette from up here. I just wanna have the vignette uh, helping to isolate the model. And in this corner, with that sun there, it'll look kinda weird to have a vignette with the sun coming through it. And as you probably saw, it looked like it burned out some of the rays a little bit. But here we go. Uh, the vignette, I think, is added to the photo. Sort of, uh, you know, created a, a bit more isolation of the model. And I love how the sun's coming down. It's as though the sun is beaming directly on her. So let me show you the before and the after. I think we've come a long way. And I think really just the vignette filter and the sun rays made a huge impact, right? Sun rays isolated her a bit and then vignette isolated her even more. So there it is. That's the before and that's the after. And that's this video. So. Uh, Luminar comes out tomorrow. I'll have stuff on my YouTube and my blog if you want to check it out. You'll be hearing about it here in the MacBook, uh, excuse me, MacFun Photography Facebook group, and there'll be plenty to talk about. So, thanks for joining in. I apologize again about the technical difficulties with the live show, but hopefully this video is helpful. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave a comment, and I'll do my best to assist. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Take care.